Okay. Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Uh, me go. So, welcome everyone to this session uh, where I am going to talk about CI/CD as a service uh, moving toward large-scale continuous deployment. My name is Abhinav Shrivastav. I work as a Global DevOps Lead for SAP Artificial Intelligence with SAP Labs. Um, I mainly uh, work on um, you know, solving various DevOps problem uh, by architecting the solutions based on the project. And also you can find me in various tech conferences talking about some various DevOps topics like infrastructure as a service, chat ops, um, ML ops, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so on that note, uh, let me start uh, and go to the presentation mode. And could you please confirm that it's fine looking for you? Um, okay, um, so I hope I can start. Okay, uh, okay, so let's talk about some uh, background, what we are going to talk. Uh, so often um, in a large companies like SAP or some of yours where you uh, probably working, it's often the case that project has been, you know, handled geographically multiple locations for development or via various microservices of a product, which handling null number of microservices and based on the different, you know, um, environments, uh, testing tools, languages, et cetera, et cetera. And handling this um, CI service solution for this uh, large scale setup is quite a challenging task if you don't do it, you know, in a good way. So what I'm going to talk today uh, in my, you know, next 30 minutes or so about my experience and the real time, uh, real world problems, which we solved. And I thought it's a good idea to share it on the, you know, um, you know forum where probably this talk can help some of you to, um, you know, transform your CIC journey if you're working on a large scale delivery processes or large scale delivery project. On talking on that, uh, let's quickly move on to a million dollar question. So when should we move to CI/CD? Or probably you often used to heard in your organization management discussions or something like that. Do we should we do continuous integration or delivery or are we fine with you know normal um, waterfall or normal timeline based thing like where 15 days developers are doing the development, you will get 15 days for testing or one week and then you have one week of uh, deployment process, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But to my perspective, the answer is yesterday. You should have been moved yesterday to your uh, continuous integration or delivery or deployment model. But the question arises, why should why I'm telling it? Uh, why should I even bother about CICD as I said, if everything works fine? Uh, let me give you some pointers and arguments why should you do it? Uh, first and all, uh, it increases the business value. Uh, so your customers see your changes very fast, very rapidly they are happy in terms of customers also as the internal stakeholders like development and quality people they can see every change uh, go live to the production or at least to the pre-prod things where they can instantly know that um, you know what business value their code has been bringing at the same time the testers also can realize that it's they are investing quite heavily in the continuous testing and uh, uh, the every change has been tested thoroughly uh, right from the you know um, linting approach to the security approach and everything works fine and we are very confident in our software delivery processes and what happens and by any case also you know uh, if something goes wrong then you have a very matured cicd pipelines who can deliver the hot fixes uh, very as very fast uh, and as often as you want the second point is increase the velocity productivity and sustainability so it is screens your uh, project velocity it increased the productivity of you know developers or the whole team members in terms of uh, how we are delivering the software and it also sustainable means i mean you can deliver a software but in order to sustain it uh, with the same quality you need to do it again and again uh, and that's where it can help you uh, and the third and most important part your market competition is already doing it so if you are you know fine with uh, you probably have heard of lots of stories what netflix did to some other, you know, broadcaster or, uh, you know, different things, different people or different startups who are 
going very fast uh, in today's market time. So the question, the point is, if you're not doing it, your market is the market competitor is already doing it. So if you're not adopting to the change um, in very short time of time, you will be out of the market. So that's uh, that's the very important part. So let's talk about uh, uh, mostly what's a CI/CD. So uh, just a general overview uh, how it works. So a CI/CD pipeline automates your software delivery process. The pipeline builds code, run tests and safety deploys a new version of the application for every change. So just a general diagram, uh, when you start with the code, so you push a code and you commit it and it goes to a CI loop where the uh, it runs build, unit test, integration test is just an example. You can test anything in this loop. And once you are fine, I mean, it, obviously it's automated. So once you, have, you are fine that everything is good, good, it goes to the CI, CD uh, phase where is the continuous delivery or deployment where you review the changes or probably have some manual judgment from some test uh, engineer or test manager or someone uh, you know who is have the authority to approve the changes or it then it goes to staging and then it runs probably some more tests and goes to production or pre prod based on your business scenarios but the question is how is continuous testing fits in ci cd uh, so the continuous testing uh, if you understand continuous testing now the market has been changed. The testing has no longer the classical testing approaches where you, as I said, uh, you know, uh, you had two, three weeks of validation period. Everyone is doing some manual testing, uh, uh, updating the things, and it all looks fine. Now the continuous testing or testing is an essential part of the DevOps. So if I just took a, a definition from the Gartner, uh, the business wants to obtain immediate feedback uh, for all the changes which have uh, you know you are pushing into the code based on what kind of business risk they impose for uh, identifying the risks or you know issues in your business you need to test as often as possible as fast as possible where the continuous testing comes into the picture so you can see here continuous testing now it's an essential part of the whole devops series uh, starting from the build to the you know deploy automation and release to the monitoring so testing is no longer a stage or delivery, but an integral DevOps activity that exists in various form through all areas. So now uh, how it works in the real time thing, I can give an example, continuous testing. So whatever you have in, you know, there are basically two most talked approaches, which is shift left approach and shift right approach. Shift left approach is you test as early as possible as often. Uh, so we have the checks from starting from the linting, say, you know, pilot, you, uh, the unit tests on our cube code coverage still to the right uh, thing like uh, security things and also to monitoring uh, things in the production. So everything works automatically and hand in hand with all the delivery life cycle. Uh, so it's it's also about the embracing the DevOps culture where you know these changes are needed. Uh, quickly going on, uh, it all sounds good, but is it scalable? That's the question comes always. Is also all good, but is it scalable in the large projects? So let's take with a real world scenario for a large scale project. What are the major challenges comes? So it the major challenges start with a you start with geographically located teams. You know you probably have in your in your own organization also there are different teams sitting on different uh, geographic location, different timings. They have multiple programming languages. Um, in a microservice architecture, with someone is having something else for front end, the back end, the DB. Uh, the containerization and the delivery process, lots of things are there. And most important, uh, every team has a different requirements, right? I mean, someone have the, they want, probably they want to deliver to environment on AWS. Someone say, no, I, I will, I have the business case who use the Cloud Foundry or, you know, so these different teams have different requirements in terms of different tooling, as well as some to testing. When you, you will say that someone wants to do Selenium, someone wants to do, you know, some web driver data, or someone, Etc. Etc. So based on the language, the testing tools also will get changed. So imagine a scenario: you have 50 or 60, you know, uh, or 100 microservices. How it will, how it's gonna look like uh, to have a, you know, separate solutions in terms of CI/CD and fulfilling all the requirements of your corporate as well as from quality and you know, uh, from the development end. So talking about the modern day microservice architecture, it could be as simple as that, where you have one-one services for everything or it could be as dangerous as this. Uh, if you are Amazon or Netflix, you can just imagine this is how they're, uh, you know, if you combine their microservices, this is how they look like. So just imagine if you have to deploy this kind of thing and you don't have a proper uh, things in place, what the deployment will look like. 
it will look like something like this to you. I mean, people will figure it out. They will eventually do it, but there is always some problems and you will not achieve the true DevOps or true CICD principles where, you know, your chains are propagating as fast as possible. You will have always have some broken things, interdependency and all those things. Uh, so the question remains as um, how can you accommodate this diversity? Uh, how much time you will be spending configuring every time for each LOB or dev team, a new CICD chain? And what about maintaining and upgrading all the elements of CICD tool chain to be component, uh, to be compliant with any new security requirement from a security department, along with multiple test requirement in CICD tool chain? So you can see the question, uh, you know, remains very uh, tricky in terms of last things when you have last setup, how to manage all these things. So a potential uh, answer could be a CICD as a service, what we do also in SAP Labs or in SAP. Uh, uh, we uh, basically enhance the concept of shared library and some automations or here in next slides, what I'm going to show you uh, a particular, basically a technical approach, how that can be work. And then I will show you how SAP works in a very sophisticated way, which could probably give you some idea for your organization also. Okay, so CICD as a, uh, or CICD as a service, what it is, uh, it could be a central CICD offering as a service which consists of shared library and multiple self-service jobs for creating an end-to-end -end CICD solution and configuring for any repo based on the requirement within minutes. The solution performs below tasks automatically. So you can, before move to the solution, you can just imagine as an, if you know about AWS or something like that, those are also as a service, right? You just go to their UI and you just create, say that I want um, an EC2 or a Linux machine with this, this, this configuration, you click a button, and boom, there you have a uh, you know uh, everything ready for you uh, deployed into the AWS servers, just like that. So if you imagine you have this 50 microservices, and now uh, you have a process in place, a, a paved path, or and you know already defined templates where you just go and first you onboard. You just say like uh, I have decided that I will move to CI/CD things. Once your management has decided, you first come to this and you onboard or your you know github repo for all the ci cd configuration which is very tricky and then you use a toolkit library which is called uh, uh for us we are using sap piper it's an open source also you can also search it uh, so sap piper is nothing it's a toolkit library where all the things are already defined in terms of a, all ci cd pipeline templates and what you have to do you have to just import it in your github repo and you will be all that ci cd paved a path for your CICD pipeline or certain, you know, ready-made um, pipelines will be generated for you on the fly. So let's see how this works. So suppose again, I will take a, a real-world problem statement. To suppose I am working on a, or you are working on a globally scattered team, uh, works on a which works on a software product which consists of 50 microservices of different programming language, and support different deployment runtime as Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry. Quality team also have different solutions and tooling based on the programming language for verification of solutions, starting from linting till security tools. The goal of the team is to achieve agility and faster feedback loops to increase the business value of the product. Let's see. In my pre uh, with my previous statement uh, with this solution as a service, how can we solve this? Or probably uh, uh, have a potential answer to handle the you know uh, complexity. So let's see the first one. So the self, uh, which is automated CI/CD onboarding. So what this job does, this could be a self-service job, uh, which will take care of your end-to-end CI/CD configuration, but create a complete chain of CI/CD with no human intervention. So if you have some familiarity with the CI/CD things uh, in the audience, you know that in order to set up all the tools uh, with your corporate requirements from the linting to security, it's a big task, and uh, having all the infrastructure spawn up and have connections, uh, you know connection that means talking to each other in your tool chain, it's quite uh, you know, just a tedious task if you're going to do it for each microservice. So suppose if I you have given a freedom uh, by embracing the true DevOps culture, uh, just like this, I mean, just an example. Uh, so you have a self-service shop where you come and just give your GitHub repository, your user, your sonar cube if you're using, what environment you want to provision, and email where you all want all these things. And once you fill it, click on build, this all the stages for your GitHub repo. I mean, uh, on your GitHub repo, it creates a GitHub repository, it creates a Docker repository. 
where your builds gonna store as a Docker files. You create all the user assignment, the technical users, and all those things. Uh, you make all the config files. You generate all the Jenkins files on our cube. Uh, in, you provision the infrastructure in sending details to user. But this is all looks in UI. Let's go in dip a uh, bit deep how it works in the background. So uh, suppose you have make one uh, central library where uh, where everything, every file can be maintained centrally. Uh, in testing terms, you can also say uh, think is like a page object model, right? Which you do in Selenium where you create your object repository and a, a reusable function. Just like that, if you just create for every tooling, you create a Groovy file because the, uh, you know um, Jenkins supports a Groovy files um, if you're using Jenkins. So uh, in this example, I'm just showing the Jenkins example. So you have uh, all the Groovy files written for you for each of the job, which you showed here in this section. So you can see here for everything is maintained via a Groovy file. A simple example, suppose if I'm taking is creating a GitHub repository. So I am just giving a curl with the authorization token of a, of a technical user, base64 encoded, and I just I'm just creating a GitHub repo. Just like that, I have for F configuration or logic written for everything. And this is this would be my Jenkins file where we have different stages like the GitHub repository. Again, this is the same thing which I showed you in the previous thing, uh, which was showing in the greens stages. The logic has been written for each stage, like create GitHub repository. I'm just calling that particular uh, GitHub repo.groovy, which I just showed you previous screen. And all these, just like that, uh, for every stage I have a setup. And then in my Jenkins, I in configuration of my self-service job, I just set up this script path by calling that uh, to a particular uh, GitHub uh, where it is stored. And this is how the whole connection works. Uh, talking about the infrastructure, this is a very important part. Uh, if you can imagine that you are supporting all the hyperscalers and also Cloud Foundry, like us in SAP, we use the SAP Cloud Platform uh, um, based on the Cloud Foundry. So, um, or you, you probably have seen that in day-to-day -day general life also, the creating the test infrastructure is always a big challenge. And there is always a challenge, which is that test infrastructures are not matching with the production. And that's why you probably find some bugs in pre-prod or production, which is having some different infrastructure. So it's always a good idea to have all the infrastructure as one, like production is equal to dev plus test or test. So how can we achieve this? And how? what is the best practice to do it is always infrastructure as a code. So I just, in the given example in the screen, I have taken an AWS where I have dev, uh, uh, in integration, pre-prod, prod, and staging, different things. And for example, uh, we are we we use mostly Terraform uh, to provision all these environments in AWS. So what is Terraform? Terraform is a um, infrastructure as a code tool which supports multiple multi-cloud things. You can see here like this, uh, where you can just spawn uh, multiple uh, Kubernetes clusters as well as uh, different uh, other environments like Cloud Foundry and all can be maintained via code. So how this works in a very general way, so suppose uh, you are working on a release and so you want to validate say every night, just for example, on your nightly builds. So what it does, it, it either can be a static uh, thing which your infrastructure team has been given, which usually happens, but you are not uh, running on the, it is not equivalent to the prod, but what could be a good idea because everything is as a code uh, in the night you just, uh, go to your scripts and you say that I want to spin a replica of prod systems or pre-prod system and it will just create a, a Kubernetes clusters uh, for you whatever the you know hyperscaler you use and then just apply what different set, uh, you know, configuration from the infrastructure uh, and you will always have a you know prod like system which you can perform mostly for the loads testing and performance testing which is very important to do on the production like environment so that's the that's how we do it so let's talk about the CI/CD toolkit library. The second part, uh, which you know, give you the paved path or ready-made pipelines. So we use a library called Project Piper. It is open source. You can just Google it. You will get it uh, by SAP. So it's a continuous delivery, uh, uh, you know, um, solution which provides you the inbuilt pipeline templates. Of, so some, you just go to like this. You just import it in two liners and third line, just like that. And every setup is already in. Uh, maintained and once you do this you will get something like this so this thing what you are seeing it here it will automatically create it for you via jenkins file 
and everything is maintained in this uh, Piper library, uh, all the configuration will be, I mean, it's a just one time configuration in, in your GitHub repository where you have to provide your certain things in terms of your project. Like, for example, if you are doing a testing, uh, security testing in terms of white source with a tool, so what is your white source project name or your sonar cube? What is your sonar cube project name to run? You know, push the coverage and all those things. So this is now you can see now just imagine if 50, uh, you know, microservices are there and they all use the onboarding template, uh, which you have provided for your organization or your basically at least your LOB level. Uh, everyone have a diff same, you know, way to do it. It's just like reuse, uh, reusing the same code again and again. And if they want uh, anything different, they can write on top of it. But the foundation layer is diff uh, same, and the, uh, your solution is you know ready to you know mint. It's it's really easy to maintain it. Basically, uh, suppose you want to change a security thing. Suppose uh, if so, uh, if something comes that you want to take uh, one new um, security tool, just like that, just like example for Black Duck for testing. Um, and the Docker images, then you can just implement it at one place and every 50 microservice will automatically get it. So this is how you, it can be, you know, it will be easy to maintain all these things because everyone is calling the same template, everyone is using same template and delivery method and processes are same. Uh, so let me talk quickly how SAP does it. Uh, the same tech things which I showed you in a very bare metal things, but in a sophisticated way, which can be probably help you to deciding your own solution if you want to do it. So what we did, uh, we created a web, uh, I mean, an internal app uh, which called Hyperspace. Uh, it's not open to outside SCP, but it's just a general idea which I'm giving to you. So it's a web app, which I have put the screenshots where what we did, we just uh, give you an internal thing where we ask you and back, back of that things, it same happened, which I showed you what happens in the background. So you just go here and filter by programming language or steps, but you can see here we have integrated all the tools at one go. So in security, you can see check mark 45, et cetera, et cetera, static code check, check style, ESLint, find bugs, code coverage, acceptance testing, source code management, health check, performance testing, unit tests. I, mean, I can go on. Uh, it deployment, integration test, intellectual property, open source vulnerability, orchestration, et cetera, et cetera. So you can imagine for every change, this goes to all these checks, whatever the tools have been done. So it gives a, it gives everyone confidence and increase the very business value that if I'm making a change, we are testing from the linting till security level. Every test is there, and every software release candidate has been thoroughly tested, and we are ready, good to go in order to increase our productivity as well as our business value to the customers and internal stakeholders also. Uh, at the end, what we do also gives. Uh, so once you select it, you can also drag drop the things like this and um, basically just click on register new pipeline and it will create everything and you will get all the details. Um, so this is just a general idea. I mean, every uh, organization has different needs, but this could be a general idea if you want to streamline the process and handle the things. Uh, so best, what would be the best practices in microservices CICD? Um, these are the, some very key pointers if you want to succeed in your CICD or DevOps journey and if you want to move faster to your market competitors. The first thing is CICD templates should be prioritized higher than the business needs. So you have to understand the CICD is the you know basic or the basic uh, bare metal things which is um, you know delivering your software that it should be the increase in the business. Everything use a container-based pipeline, uh, which I showed you. Whatever the stages I'm showing, it should be container-based. Why container-based? Because uh, all it needs are Docker files, so it, it eliminates the you know require hard requirement for any tooling. Like you can use any tool as, as possible, increase the flexibility. Just provide a Docker file to the uh, Jenkins stages, and it will run the Docker file. It's the responsibility of the QA people who whatever they are writing in the tool, just bind it to the Docker file and there is no dependency of any test tooling. Uh, reusability of CICD pipelines is critical as I showed you with the statements. So if you reuse the thing, you will have the same templates everywhere. Make infrastructure as a code, uh, which I showed. Enforce governments outside the service code. The governance is already very much important. Whatever you are doing in terms of uh, you know, uh, your delivery process, everything should be audited and everything should be documented on governance uh, should be happen. But it should happen outside the service code. 
So on my live slide, the key benefit for uh, using this kind of as a service concept is that they, the developers or stakeholders get the CI CD chain dev that they want delivered within minutes and ready to deploy on their preferred runtime. All the elements they have selected automatically deployed and configured to work together without any additional effort required as, to, as uh, opposed to traditional approach where they would have to configure each element manually. Uh, they can focus what matters. This is the most important thing, creating new features and new applications rather than spending time in configuring all the elements in their CI CD chain. In summary, CI CD is the backbone of modern day software delivery. It has large scale challenges, but CI CD as a service could be a potential solution for these things. And on the last note, I always remember if you're not doing it, your market competition is doing it. On that note, thank you so much. Uh, that would be my last slide. Uh, I can, if you want to discuss it more, apart from the questions, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. Or also, I will be available on the networking thing. So I can see there is a question, how can, how can we implement this model in complex agile environment where our product scope is very high in terms of scalability? Okay, so this is what I have showed. Uh, this is very much, uh, this solution very much complemented agile deliver environment. It's specifically designed of agile environment. Agile environment principle says is we should be very agile and we should be very always ready to, you know, and deliver as the changes as fast as possible. So if you apply this thing, you have a standard process in the agile, uh, which, you know, uh, deliver your solution as very fast. So in terms of complexity, which I showed you into the real time problems, uh, so that uh, if you have a paved path kind of a solution, which your some someone have authority as a centrally, they're saying this is the process we are going to follow. Um, this will solve your complexity. This is all to solving the complexity. The last part is where our product scope is very high in terms of scalability. Yeah. So scalability comes in terms of it could be anything, right? I mean, if if your product is not scalable in terms of infrastructure, then you have to solve all these problems that how you are scaling your infrastructure. That's what I was talking that often is the case that uh, production is uh, not equal to or the dev environments is not, uh, you know, replica of production thing. So if you follow all these principles, which I showed you, the scalability will come automatically. Um, yeah, so that would be my answer for this, for this question. If you have any other questions, you can paste on the chat. So I think I have one minute left for this session. If the whole, if you could can confirm it. Okay, I guess there's no questions on that then. Uh, then thank you so much for joining. Hopefully to see you next year physically, you know, <laughs> into the uh, this thing and discuss it face to face. Uh, until then, everyone, please keep safe, have, uh, take good care of your health and have a good day. Thank you so much. And I will be available in the networking session. Thank you.